Welcome home. How's everybody doing this morning? Some of us had our coffee. Some of us are still just the cough part. Amen. The rest of you is waiting on the E. Hey, aren't you glad you came to church this morning? I know the PJs felt good, and it, it, but you had to get moving somehow. You got to start your week off the right way. Amen. This isn't the end. This is the beginning. Hey, ma'am, say it with me. It's the beginning. It's the beginning. Hey, man, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Let's have church with Him today. Hey, man. Uh, I just got one announcement. Next week, we will be at church for seven years. Hey, man. Hey, man. So we're going to celebrate our truth anniversary next week, and we're going to just, we're, here's, what we're going, here's what we're going to do. We're going to lift him up, and that's it. All right, we're just going to get right on into the service with, um, and, and, and have a good time today. Brother Chris is going to come lead us in worship, and let's just have a good time in the Lord. Amen? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome home. Some of you haven't been here for a while. We're glad you're here. If you're visiting for the very first time, we want you to know you are our honored guest, and we want you to feel welcome. We'd like uh, to sing a song this morning, Victory in Jesus, and here comes my lovely... She doesn't like it when I say this, but uh, isn't she wonderful? Oh, she's mad already. All right, let's all stand and sing Victory in Jesus together.
Lord, we come to you today with a humble spirit. We ask you to help us today that we would be obedient. There are people under the sound of our voice today that need you now more than ever. We pray today that you would speak to our hearts, speak to us through song and through your given word. We pray that the message would be delivered from your throne. Help each and every one that's here, those that might be watching from home, bless them from on high, Father, for it's in Christ's name we thank you and we pray, amen. amen. I have a surprise for you today. My granddaughters are going to sing a song with me, so come on, girls. Now, they're singers. They sing all the time, and we like to dance, too. We had a big dance competition Friday night. We won't talk about that, will we? This is Emma. and Come right over here so we can all see you. This is Emma, and this is Stella. Aren't they beautiful? Amen. We're going to sing a song that is very, very simple. Um, I guess some people could say that it's repetitive, but it's a simple story of our love for Jesus. You listen as we sing. The greatest of all love songs I want to sing to you. And so I'll let my words be Thank you. 
And I stand in all of you, my Jesus. And yes, I stand in all of you, Lord. And I'll let my words be you. Mics are soaking wet with sweat. <laughs> we like to create memories with them because, you know, it's just a matter of days before we're old and grown and they don't come around no more. So we try to make sure that our house is completely childproof, even the refrigerator. We had the refrigerator seven minutes and Brock broke the first drawer in the refrigerator. And you know what I said? He looked so scared. I said, it's just like Fritos. They'll make more. <laughs> Nothing like your grandchildren. Isn't that right, Jim? And I hear we have more coming. Scandalous. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> now, when the Lord said, <laughs> now these kids love the Old Testament. <laughs> he, what did he tell them? Go forth and multiply. God bless your heart. <laughs> We're thankful for them. Would you give them a wonderful hand? They could be anywhere else, but they're here. They could be anywhere else, but they're here. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. Now, here's another surprise. Shelly's going to sing. So come on, Shelly. Yeah, this is my lovely bride of 37 years. She told me this morning her back's still hurting from carrying me. Uh, Chris, te Chris said, texted, Corey texted and wanted to know would he sing this song and him sing the song. And I appreciate you, Corey. That you have the faith in me. I just hope I can do it justice. <clears throat> it's hard to follow that sticker. Yeah. It seemed I'd lost my reason to get up every morning, for I had lost all hope and love. 
Then and there, <laughs> I wonder, I wonder this morning, has it been settled? Mm. I think at this point, we need to start thinking about, is it settled? Hey, Amen. We're going to go ahead and let the kids go down for something special for them. All I know is um, um, they're going to talk about figs, and apparently figs get newtoned. Hey, Amen. Uh, and I, I hope they have some left over. I haven't had a fig newton since the nineties. Amen. I'm ready. I've been waiting. Amen. Figgy pudding. I don't think I've ever had figgy pudding. Uh, so somebody will have to bring that to me. Um, while they're they're heading that direction and and everything, I want to. Uh, Miss Nancy got us another. Uh, uh, Another uh, wonderful uh, Christmas ornament to, to go on our Christmas tree uh, to match our pandemic one. It, it, is, uh, it is from the, uh, the New Year's service, Stink, Stank, Stunk, 2020. Amen. So we'll, th- we'll have that to remember this past year. But, you know, thankfully, uh, uh, it, uh, the Bible records for us 
it came to pass. Amen. And the things uh, of yesterday do not have to dictate the things of today. Things can pass away, and the Bible says, "Behold, all things can become new." Amen. So let's 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 stop worrying about yesterday and let's start living for today, pursuing tomorrow. Amen. Uh, turn with me, if you will, the book of John, chapter number eight. John chapter eight. Last week we introduced our new our new uh, theme for the year, and and we'll hit this and revisit it and it's basically a, a driving point that we want to do we want to lift up Jesus amen should should be an understatement for all churches just to lift him up but I feel like a lot of times we're too busy being distracted that we don't lift him up and therefore because he's not lifted up it's hard to see him because somebody's head's in the way Amen. Have you ever had that? You just can't see because there's some dude in there who's seven foot tall decided to be on the front lines. Amen. We were we went to uh, uh, Disney World a few years ago, and uh, Titus was about three years old, so he was about yay tall. And uh, uh, we wanted to go to one of those parades. You know, they happen every like thirty minutes. So, and, and they're fun. And everybody dances, and, and Titus wanted to go to one of the parades, so we, we scheduled to be there instead of being in line, because that's what you do at Disney World. You go to stand in line. Some people ride rides, other people stand in lines to get on them. But we, so we're standing there on the side of the road, and all of a sudden these people began to press in on us. And when they pressed in on us, they enclosed him, and he couldn't see. So I felt a tug because, you know, I could see fine. I could see right over their heads. But he tugged on me. He said, Daddy, I can't see. I said, oh, you can't. I said, he said, lift me up. So I, I picked him up and put him on my shoulders so that he could see. And, you know, I, I thought, man, how amazing it is. Sometimes we all need a, a, a little shoulder to be on top of so that we can see right. But then we learned a lesson together, Titus and I. Because he was head and shoulders above everybody else, one of the characters who was lifted up on the floats saw him over everybody else and waved at him, and Titus just got all happy and excited. He about fell off my shoulders. Uh, you see, we found out that sometimes in an effort for him to be lifted up, somebody else could see him better. You know, in John chapter number 8, uh, Jesus points to us and shows us that if he's lifted up, people can see. The problem is, is we have a whole humanity that's seven foot tall standing in the way. So we have to do some creative things to allow him to be lifted up this morning. Would you stand for the reading of God's word? John chapter 8, verse 21. Jesus has talking and he's in the midst of the temple here and, and, and in the court they've wanted to stone somebody but they had to lay their stones down because he was writing their sins in the dirt amen uh, but then he begins to talk to the men and the women who are in the crowd and he says to them verse 21 I go my way and ye shall seek me and you shall die in your sins whether I go ye cannot come now that is a great opening a uh, verse for today's sermon, isn't it? Man, how'd that make you feel? I'm leaving, and you're going to die in your sins. <laughs> then said the Jews, will he kill him? They're not focused on their sins. They're focused on, hey, is this guy gone crazy? He's about to kill himself. Um, will he kill himself because he saith, uh, whether I go, you cannot come. And he said unto them, ye are from beneath. <laughs> And I'm from above. Ye are of this world, and I am not of this world. I say therefore unto you, that ye shall die in your sins, and ye shall believe not that I am he, and ye shall die in your sins. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus said, even the same that I said unto you from the beginning, I, I have many things to say and to judge of you. But, 
but he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. <laughs> they understood not that he spake to them of the Father. And look what he said. When have, when ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he. That I do nothing of myself, but, I, but as my Father who hath taught me, I speak these things. And he sent, the, sent me. And he that has sent me is with me, and the Father hath not sent me alone. For I do always those things that please him. <laughs> Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being so good to us. Lord, you, we thank you for loving us. We thank you for caring for us. We thank you for, for who you are. And what you had come to do in our lives. I pray God that you would take me. Set me aside. And we can see you lifted up. Take these lips of clay. And speak life through them. God empty me of self and sin. Fill me with your spirit today. Because every service is the Super Bowl. And I pray, God, that we do this together. Because if we're together, there'll be no doubt. In Jesus' name, amen. And you may be seated. Verse number 25 says, Who art thou? Who are you? So they're speaking to Jesus and they're asking him who he is because they can't see who he is. You, you see, they, the, this question is solidifying what Jesus has just said to them in verse 23 and 24. He said, ye are uh, from beneath and I am from above. Ye are of this world, and I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins, for ye believe not that I am he, and ye shall die in your sins. He is telling them that they're down from down here, therefore it's hard for them to understand who he is. Uh, F.B. Meyer said it like this, there was a mystery in all, uh, in all of this that baffled the men of his age. They were from beneath and they lived for the worldly aims and were governed by early or earthly emotion or motives and sought for the praise of men. You see what the problem is here? They had a heritage problem. If you read further in the text, you'll find that, that, that these men would, 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 would go on to say who their daddy was. They would say that, 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 that their dad was uh, uh, Abraham. He said that they were Abraham. And then, the, then he said that their dad, their dad was, was God. But see, Jesus points out that, they, that, that their, their daddy issues was what was confusing them. They, they, had, they had an identity crisis going on. And the people in the congregation really didn't understand who they were because they had daddy issues. Now, when I was reading this, and I hope you, you would allow me to, to, to take you into my world for a minute, okay? I, yeah, yeah, it gets scary now, all right? I, I, I'm reading this, this text, and I'm like, holy cow. Jesus just turned into Maury Popovich. And I just started picturing on the stage. Uh, here it is, these, these men and women, uh, these, these people who had, who had sat there and, and, and come to the stage. And Jesus grabs the mic and he says, uh, uh, who is your daddy? <laughs> and so he, he begins to, to say, well, my, I think my daddy's this guy. And, and, and they start telling why they think this is their daddy. Abraham's my daddy. And and, they, and and Jesus Jesus said, "Okay, well, well we need we were after the break. We're going to talk about the test results." And and he goes, he comes out, he gets out the little uh, Manila envelope, and he pops the baby open, and he pulls out, and he says, uh, "I'm sorry to report to you, but Abraham is not your daddy." And everybody goes, oh. 
do you know of anybody else who's your daddy? And he, he said, well, well, if it ain't Abraham, it's got to be God. And God's God's got to be my father. And, and, and he's like, oh, okay. okay. After the break, because <laughs> we got a 30-minute episode, amen. we got to fill in. we got to get our people paid, amen. amen. After the Ben Gay commercial, we'll tell you the results. So, commercial over, here's, here's Jesus. And he pulls up the slip and he goes, oh, Well, the test results in, God is not your daddy. He said, But we've been searching through your life and we found that your daddy is a, a liar. Not only is he the liar, you, you read this, amen. This is good stuff. This is why you should read the Bible. It's better than Desperate Housewives, amen. He said, he said, You're, <laughs> he said, you are of your father, the devil. Holy, oh, oh, snap. He just blew their minds right there in front of everybody. They're like, no way. He said, you are a liar just like he's a liar. You see, I'm... I have found that in this world in which we live, we have a lot of people with daddy issues. Amen. They think they're a part of this tribe. They think that they're a part of this family. They think that they're a part of this friend group. But really, really, when it comes down to it, they identi their identity is wrapped up in the world. <laughs> And they have become worldly. And they ask the question, when Jesus re begins to work in their life, they ask the question, who are you? You see, they cannot identify Jesus in their life because they've never met him. They've never attached their name to him. They've never given their lives over to him. And they wonder why they feel so broken all the time, why they feel so hurt, why they feel like everything's against them. It's because they've never identified with the master of the world. <laughs> These Jews... Couldn't see Jesus because they had some seven-footers standing in front of them. Yeah. They had the, their past standing in front of them. They had their parents standing in front of them. They had their partners standing in front of them. They had their pride and their pedigree. And they, they had their, their priest standing in front of them. They had all of these people and all of these things and all of these attributes standing in front of them. And they couldn't see Jesus because of all of the attachments to this world. And I wonder how many people under the sound of my voice is so attached to things down here that they cannot see the man up there. I can't see him. I can't see him because he has not taken the platform of my life. He's not taking over the platform. He's not standing higher than everything. He's just a part of the crowd. Mm -hmm. We have so many platform seekers in our world. So many loud voices. Some of us in this room right now, the loudest voices we've been hearing and from, from March to today has been our social media account. We have been disconnected from the world and we have connected to our own world. Mm. I don't have to listen to what he thinks about what I think because I can just unfollow him. And I can unfollow him and he don't know that I have unfollowed him. He just disappears. And we make people disappear from our lives that are contrary to what we think because it rubs us the wrong way. But we allow individuals who think like us to infiltrate our minds <laughs> and pour their septic tank of thoughts into our heads and the toxicity that, that comes out of their fingertips. I don't, can't say that word. You'll have to teach me. I mean, it, it comes 
in through our eyes because that's all we're seeing. And we wonder why we feel so bad right now. Why are we so unhappy? I read a statistic the other day. It said that, that, that divorce levels have went down. You know why divorce levels have went down? It's because acceptance level has went up. The same situations that was going on before, we just, they just said, well, we're in a pandemic. I'll just accept that. Hmm. We have problems. We have music artists that take the platforms of our lives. We, I'm going to say, I just, I know that I'm going to rub some people the wrong way because y'all love y'all's music. Preacher, don't you deal with the music. Talk about Garth Brooks, y'all get mad at me. I'm going to get a 30-day silent on your Facebook account because I talk about guns and roses. Yeah. Just, you can unfollow me. That's all right. I, I probably unfollowed you months ago. Amen. <laughs> yeah. But we, you don't know, but the trash that goes in your ears becomes the trash that you produce in your life. You, you wonder why it's okay to, for everybody around to go sleeping around. It's because the music we live in uh, is saying it's okay and promotes it. And we're like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's got a good beat. And we get our kids in the background singing background vocals. And we wonder why the next generation is psychos. It's, it's because... It's because you're listening to hardcore rap and they're, they're running your stations. And then we want to take them to a movie. And I ain't against movies now. I like movies. Don't get me wrong. I think it's good for a family to get some popcorn and watch some movies together. Spend some family time together. But listen, some of the trash that we're watching nowadays, th these things are going in our eyes. So we've infiltrated the ears to get to the mind. Now we're going through the eyes to get to the mind. And we wonder why it, was okay, it wasn't okay for Dick Van Dyke and Mary Tyler Moore to be in the same bed. And now on ABC, we have all... I ain't even going to have to go through it. Just close your eyes for a second because you've seen it yesterday. You know what I'm talking about. We have allowed this. Why? Because the desensitization of American Christians have devalued what we think of God and the moral standards in which we live. And we, mm, I didn't come to say this, but I might as well park right here. Amen. We have devalued what Christ thinks about sin and we have embraced what we think about sin. Therefore, I can accept it. Why can't you? And we're broke down because we can't see him because all of this. We'll argue about all this. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Societal issues today are splitting families. There are people who sit in this church right here who hasn't had a good conversation with their family since somebody rioted in the streets a couple of months ago. You think I'm wrong? Hmm. Ask around, honey. They'll tell you the truth. It's because this is what I think. You have to bow down to what I think. I'm not bowing. We stopped learning from each other and we start lording lording over each other and we've got real problems I can't see Jesus because my mom's standing in my way I can't see Jesus because my aunt's mad at me and she's putting her poison in my life I can't see Jesus because my church wants to stand over here or wants to stand over here or have this political agenda or my pastor wants to preach like this and I don't like how he preaches so I'm going to go over here. <laughs> the 
Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. We are not a political church. We are a church that's going to lift up Jesus. You see, I don't want a congregation that knows more about social injustice than they know about Jesus. I don't want a church that knows more about Trump's platform and Biden's platform than they know about Jesus' platform. I want a church that has seen the one who is high and lifted up, uh, who was crucified for man's transgression, who was buried and risen to give us newness of life. I want people to raise up and live the standard that Jesus Christ has left for us to live. Yeah, they said, who is he? Many of us need to give Jesus his mic back. Many of us needs to step off the platform and let him mount it again. Many of us needs to give Jesus back his pulpit. Mm-hmm. Hey, Amen. I said it. To, you can write it down. Quote me. Buy the t-shirt. I said, get out of his pulpit and let him preach again. Amen. Yeah. We need to see real change. And real change will only come when t- verse 28 comes to light Jesus said unto them when ye have lifted up the son of man when Jesus is lifted up everything change I say this this morning will you with me lift him up yeah I believe this that every person when when Jesus is lifted up and given his platform again will see real change in their life. You see, you say, preacher, what will happen when I give Jesus the platform again? When I hand him his mic back and let him do it. Look, it says, then. <laughs> then tells us that something has to happen before so that something can now happen after. He said, then so what happened before when jesus uh, when you have lifted up jesus or the son of man then look at this they said who who are you then you'll know then you'll know who i am jesus said when i'm lifted up You'll know who I am. I've got to be lifted up so that you know who I am. Paul says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death and and by any means uh, I might obtain the resurrection of the dead. He said, uh, I want to see the risen Savior. I want to be close to him. I want to see him. I want to be delivered by him. I want to attain more for my life. Because I want to see him. And I want to know him. I wonder this morning, do you know him? Have you seen him? I think about the two thieves that were crucified together on the cross with Jesus. In Luke chapter 23, you can write this down and read through it tonight. But You have the one on one side and he says to Jesus, he says... Uh, um, if you're Christ, why not save yourself and save us too? If you are who they say you are, if you are who you say you are, then why don't you save yourself first? And while you're saving yourself, go ahead and save me too, only if you are who you are. But I like what the second thief said. He said, but the Bible says in verse 40, it says, but the other answered, rebuking him, rebuked him, saying, dost thou not fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation, and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, uh, but this man hath done nothing amiss, and he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest to thy kingdom. 
Man, I was reading through this and some things popped out. So you see, he knew his personal position. He knew that he was the reason why he was on the cross. You see, so a lot of us in this room right now don't know the reason why we're on our way to hell. Let me go ahead and st- you, you, you know why? Because from elementary school, everybody has told you you're good. You're a good person. You're going to make it. Everything about you is wonderful because you got a good smile. You're smart. You're funny. You're articulate. And we build confidence in our sin. Nobody's ever told us that we're filthy, rotten sinners worthy of death and hell. But Jesus. <laughs> he, he then he says at the, the very last verse 42, he says, and he said unto, the, unto Jesus, he begins the statement with, Lord. Hanging from a cross, he recognized Jesus for who he was. He said, Lord, it means supreme authority now that's a change from the other dude on the other side and but he goes on he says he understood that he's in supreme authority and that he has a possession a kingdom he says thy kingdom and then he he understood and he thought he said I'm not going to command myself off the cross he said I just really just want to be remembered whenever he gets to the place that he's going You see, he on the cross recognized that Jesus had a reason for allowing himself to be on the cross. If he didn't want to be on the cross, he wouldn't have been on the cross. Now all of this from a dude who stole something bad enough to get him hung. Now that's good preaching, amen? (laughs) And I started really, really dwelling on this and, and, and I'm... And about 11.30 last night, uh, God said, go write this down. He said, the one thief said, if you are who you say you are, save yourself and prove it by saving me too. He said, uh, but the other one, uh, he said, Corey, don't forget about the other one on the other side. He didn't say, if you are who you are. He said, because you are who you are, will you just please remember me? You say, what was the difference between the two, preacher? What was the difference? One was looking from a different angle. He saw Jesus in a different light. He looked over and he said, he's not from Nazareth he's from a kingdom far far away he he's not a Galilean his address is heaven honey hey he's not a Jew he's Jesus the Christ he is God incarnate here he is in the flesh and he saw Jesus high and lifted up and he said remember me Oh, man, I just just started thinking about the vantage point in which he saw Jesus. He saw him as he was, yet he was hanging with him. (laughs) Brother Seth, you'll see him (laughs) when you look over. And he's high and lifted up in your life. You'll see him. And you'll say, man, I can't wait to hang with you. (laughs) He said, remember me. Oh, Yeah. Now we know the rest of the story is Jesus said, Lord, we're going to paradise together. Amen. (laughs) Yeah. But I, I wonder how many people in the room. That's right now listening to the sound of my voice or or watching at home right now that can't see Jesus because they got a neighbor who stands tall above them and they're a hypocrite. The holiest person they know cusses like a sailor, drinks like a fish. The holiest person they know. They go to church every Sunday, but they live Monday through Saturday like the world. I wonder who's standing in your way of seeing Jesus today. Maybe there's a family member who is fake and you know it. Listen, everybody's born with a fake button. Amen. Everybody knows. It should be like an ejector seat from your life. Fake. (laughs) 
Maybe there's some, some social forum that stands above everything else right now. Maybe, maybe, maybe you can't see him because you have no personal relationship with him. You see, we're so quick to say, I can't do this because of my mom. I can't serve Jesus because my parents' belief was this. And I can't serve Jesus because of this or, or this or something I read 20,000 years ago that was wrong then and it's still wrong today. We have all these broke theories. And we use those theories to say we, we can't serve Jesus. We can't give our lives to him. Maybe it's just, maybe, maybe, maybe you just haven't looked over top of their head and seen him. Yeah. And then I started really thinking, eh, I, I probably shouldn't think this much. It never records the thief's family, does it? Never. Brother Skip had never said he had a brother. Never said he had a mom. Obviously he had one. At some point there was a dad involved. Maybe for a few minutes. Who knows? Maybe, maybe he had a brother or sister. Maybe he had a, maybe he had a wife. Maybe he had a, a daughter. Maybe the reason why he was hanging on the cross was because his family was hungry and he stole so that his family could eat. And maybe he, maybe he was trying to serve his family the best that he could. And he, and, but yet he had broken the law and the law said that he must die. Never records him. And I wonder what it would have been like for a Jewish family to sit at dinner and Hear that daddy is getting hung. And remembering what the priest taught you in Sunday school. That anybody who hung upon a tree was cursed. And they thought daddy was going to hell. I wonder what it would be like. To recognize as you look down off that cross and maybe those kids were there and feel how you failed them and they thought that daddy's going to hell and the hero of their life lived for the world so they were going to live for the world too they never got to hear daddy say you know, I was hanging out in the right place <laughs> at the right time. And I looked over at the right time and seen the right Jesus. And he, he said, I'm, I'm, if you believe on the name, if you call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. And he, he said, I looked over and said, Lord, will you remember me? He said, he, you know, he, he never got the opportunity to tell the people in the congregation that day his testimony of finding Jesus. He never got the opportunity to call home and say, you know, Daddy, he was a broke man. He, he was a drunk. Uh, he was a drug addict. He, he, was, he was hopeless and helpless. But hey, I just want to tell you that Daddy found Jesus today. He never got the opportunity to tell other people about Jesus. He just died. I'm thankful to record to you that I have the opportunity. <laughs> Brother Mike, I got it. I know how bad a man I have been in my life. But I get to hold a little girl on my lap and tell her that daddy was broke once, but Jesus got the super glue from heaven and put him back together. I get to play Mario Brothers with my little boy, and as he's kicking the kicking my teeth in amen i can look over and say hey hey uh, i know you're having fun but uh, you know tomorrow's church and we get to serve jesus you know what jesus did for daddy uh, and i can tell him that jesus christ loves his daddy and he loves 
with him too. You say, well, what are you getting at this morning? I'm getting at this. Uh, I still have the opportunity because I got breath in my body to take the old rugged cross, plant it before my family, and say, he is risen. And you can rise with him. <laughs> yeah, he, they said, who art thou? <laughs> I wonder, are our babies today going to say that tomorrow? Has 2020 shut the church down so bad that we have a generation who just want to know who Jesus is? And Jesus said, you'll know me. <laughs> he said, when I'm lifted up, ye shall know that I'm he. What are we going to do in 2021? We're going to lift him up. <laughs> We can't live like we did in 2020 and lift him up. Miss Tanya, you, you come play for us. And, and uh, I figured out this does work. It does remind me, hey, you're done, preacher. Um, <laughs> when I was a little boy, um, we graduated from the TV with the bunny ears. Till I remember dad coming in with a 700 pound TV encased in all wood that sat on the floor. Y'all remember that? I remember when it went out too. I remember, I remember the family's thoughts on that matter. Particularly my dad's. He said, Diane, get in the car. That's how he talked. Diane, get in the car. Her name is Diana, by the way. Diane. <laughs> We're going, we're going to Kmart. He went to Kmart and bought a brand new Magnavox TV. It was a little lighter, praise God. He made me carry it in, and he, me and my brother carried it in. We take it out of the box, we set it up, and, and we look on the box and it says, all the new stuff. You, don't you like boxes? They tell you all the new stuff they've included. Like we fee. Who knew TVs needed that? Amen? And on there, you got this little thing that says picture in picture. Y'all remember that? Nobody uses it anymore, do they? <laughs> yeah, because it, was, it wasn't what it said it was. But so it said picture in picture. I got to explain this to you, young guys. Y'all know what picture in picture is. It was a picture. And a picture within the picture. <laughs> they said, you can watch two shows at once. And I'm just like you are. So I can watch two games at once. You can watch the Packers and the Bucks at the same time. That's what they'll tell you. So, you know, mom and dad's not home. I'm the c controller of the TV now. I push the, the pip button, picture in picture. And I picked the TV channel down here and I got the ESPN up here so I've got it doing down here and I got the sound on this one and I'm watching this game and I realize about halfway through the game the one down there I have no idea what's going on over there there's no sound to it because that'd be weird the, and it's so small like it's like your preacher's mind if there was two sets of sounds it'd be like my head all right all of my personalities talking at once. There's a the big picture, and it's doing all the talking. But then there's that little picture, and it's silent, and it's moving, and it's doing stuff. But ain't nobody paying attention to it. And many of us operate in our relationship with Jesus by pushing the pit button. We say we want Jesus in our lives, but he can only have this little box in the corner. And we'll focus on this big box, and we'll allow this big box to be the only box that talks to us, while this one over here is doing work in the background. And we can see it out of the corner of our eyes, but we really don't understand what it's doing. But I found something in 1993 that has changed my life forever. I don't have to.
to live with a little box down here of the Cincinnati Reds. I, I can put them on big screen, watch the whole game, hear what it has to say. I can know, Miss Nancy, I can know the score, and I can know that we aren't as bad as we used to be. <laughs> you say, why are you a psycho preacher? Because I decided that all of the stuff from 2020 that was on my big screen, <clears throat> I'm going to change the channel. And I'm going to bring Jesus up and give him the whole station. And I wonder, have you given him you today? Your focus, your attention, have you lifted him up? Mama, you can't expect your children to lift Jesus up if you don't first. You, Daddy, you can't expect your children to live a moral life like Jesus Christ unless you model it for them. Under the sound of my voice, I wonder, have you made him close for you? With every head bowed and every eye closed, nobody looking around, he said, he said if I'm lifted up, he said, then you'll know me. He said, then you'll know me. I wonder if you're here today and you, if you know him. If you're here today and you say, I know Jesus. I've met him. I believe that he died on the cross for my sin. I want to raise my hand and give testimony to the fact that if Jesus comes or I should die, I'm ready to meet him. Here's my hand. I'm saved. I'm sealed. And he delivered me. Here's my hand. Maybe you're here today and you say this, preacher, I don't know if I've ever been saved. I don't know. I don't know. But I think, no, I know. I want to know. Here's my hand, preacher. Will you pray for me? That I could know that I know Jesus. Here's my hand. Maybe you're here today and you say this, preacher. Will you pray for me that I could put him in full screen of my life? Will you pray for him for me that I could lift him up and my babies can see, my, my grandkids can see, my, 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 my family members, my co-workers can see him in my life. Preacher, will you pray for me? Here's my hand. How about we do this this morning? How about we slip out of our seat, come down to this altar, and we ask God... To, to eliminate some of the junk from our lives so, some of the commercials that are blocking out the good programming and, and say God will you please <laughs> make this thing like Amazon Prime and we can see you and see you only won't you come won't you come won't you come oh that we can get closer to him in 2021 that we could see change that we could see change but change will not come until Jesus is lifted up won't you come lift him today these have come how about you these have come how about you oh Lord help us preacher why don't I see him got too much static in your life you need to focus in on him Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being so good to us. Lord, we ask you, God, that you would help us. Help us to walk in your light. Help us to lift you up. Lord, there is a world that needs to hear from you. Lord, and now more than ever. Now more than ever. 
the church needs to lift you up. Let us be that church. Let me be that man. I love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a reminder, next week is our church anniversary. Uh, bring a friend. Uh, bring a family member. And hopefully uh, people will be able to come back uh, and be with us. I know that there's some people who rolled their sleeves up over the last couple of weeks and and said, hey, preacher, I just want to let you know uh, we are uh, we're almost ready to come back, so I can't wait till they're fully ready to come back. Amen. Uh, we can't hug them yet, but we can, you know, we can just like air hug them or something. And and I'm so excited that we've we've gotten. I've been I've been messaging people all week or getting messages of of people who have had the vaccine, and, and then there's people who are. Um, uh, who say uh, we're almost ready to come back? We're watching the numbers, and the numbers are declining, and we're excited. We're coming back, and, and, and this is awesome news, amen. And then there's other people that you know have said uh, 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 that said, "Hey, I've got a friend, and they want to come with us, uh, and and this is this is really great. We want to see the church growing, but we want to see people change, amen. And they're only going to see people change if we stop lifting everything else up and start lifting him up, amen." Uh, so let's do that together. Tonight is going to be vision night. Uh, again, uh, we're going to look at discipleship. We're going to talk a little bit about the Sunday school program. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about the children's church and things like that. Things that we want to do in 2021 to meet the needs of our people. You cannot just see people saved and set them to the side. That, that, that There's no growth in Christianity if you do not grow <laughs> in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're going to do that together tonight. And then Brother Daniel is going to be preaching. Um, uh, can't remember anything else. Um, that's why Sydney, it's, it's best when Sydney's right there. So I can be like, I need to say anything else. Brother Chris, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Wonderful message today. If it wasn't for anybody else, it was for me that we would continue to lift him up above everything else. We're thankful for each and every one of you that came. We hope you've, if you've uh, been made uncomfortable, we pray that it was the Holy Spirit speaking to you. And, uh, or hopefully it wasn't Cracker Barrel that was speaking to you. But we hope that you, uh, we hope that you were fed today, and we hope you're fed here in a minute. And we're just thankful that you came. Father, thank you for this message. Thank you for our pastor and for the church. For those that have come this morning and surrendered themselves, we ask you to overshadow them and watch over them. Help us that we might be able to look to you for all of our answers. For it's in Christ's name we thank you and we pray. And all God's children said, amen. Have a good day.